Good afternoon, truth seekers, friends and family of the internet, those who love to hate me, and you watchers on the wall. I know most of you are hearing what I'm hearing. There are mandatory evacuations pertaining to Hurricane Aaron, but there is something about this hurricane that is breaking records. Let's get into it, folks, because I found this to be super interesting and the most important thing is I don't think people are seeing what I'm seeing. So I want to bring all this up for you guys. I want to show you what's happening. And let's really, really, really deep dive. I'm getting the information up for you guys right now. All right, let's do this. Let me see where it's placed everything. All right, here we go. How Hurricane Aaron made history without even making landfall. Within 24 hours, Aaron went from a Category 1 hurricane to a Category 5. Wow, that's tremendous, guys. The Atlantic's first hurricane of 2025 wasted no time making history. Hurricane Aaron will be remembered as one of the fastest strengthening Atlantic hurricanes on record with perhaps the fastest intensification rate of any storm earlier than September 1st. Uh, at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time um, on Friday, August 15, Aaron was a Category 1. All right, over the next 24 hours, this storm strengthened significantly. By 11 a.m. on Saturday, they had declared Aaron a catastrophic Category 5 hurricane. Since then, Aaron has weakened to a Cat 4, but the extremely rapid intensification it underwent over the weekend points to a troubling phenomenon, largely driven, here they go, by rising global temperatures. They love, they love to say that. Okay, they love to say that. Let's get into this. So many people have told me it is impossible for the government to seed hurricanes, to manipulate hurricanes. I was fact-checked left and right when I asked about it. It's not possible. It's conspiracy. It is rumor. Really? Do you see what this says? Atlantic Oceanographic and Meteorological Laboratory, U.S. Department of Commerce. This, my friends, is NOAA. And this says .gov. Do you understand what that means? When you're looking up information and you're researching, if it says .edu, that means an educational facility, a university, a school, a science journal. If it says GOV, that means it is a government run site. Again, it says AOML, Atlantic Oceanographic and Meteorological Laboratory, dot NOAA, NOAA, dot GOV. So I'm getting my source information directly from the federal government. The 70th anniversary of the first hurricane seeding experiment. You want to call me a what now? What would you like to say? Mm -hmm. It was called Project Cirrus, and the crew and scientists posed in front of a B-17 used in the hurricane seating. Look at this. This was the crew that did it. On the afternoon of October 13th, 1947, an Air Force B-17 aircraft pen penetrated a hurricane 450 miles east of Jacksonville, they mean Florida, and dumped several pounds of crushed ice, dry ice, into the storm just to see what would happen, right? Because that's how our government is. This was the first attempt to modify a tropical cyclone by seeding it with freezing nuclei. It was almost the last. Folks, they tell you exactly what they mean. It was almost the last. Almost. In other words, something bad happened due to this, and it almost stopped whether 
modification completely, but it did it. The previous year, this gentleman, Vincent Schaefer, who was working at General Electric GE Laboratories, discovered that by introducing dry ice, solid carbon dioxide into an environment with super cooled water, right, he could induce the water to freeze into ice. So he decides that this means he can make clouds, remove clouds. And it wasn't long before plans were made to try seeding experiment in a hurricane. However, it wasn't until late in the following hurricane season that Air Force planes and Navy personnel became available to carry out the mission. So on October 12th, a hurricane designated King by the Air Force Hurricane Office moved northeastward over Florida. Okay, so they cloud seeded this sucker with dry ice. Here's where it got bad. They first made a half hour run over 100 miles. So... You can see the hurricane's track here, right? So when it crossed over here, this is where they did the seeding. It says, uh, they backtracked then to see what the clouds had done. Next, they did two mass droppings of 50 pounds each into one large cumulus top and orbited the cloud to see any changes. They noticed that after the first run, the cloud deck below began to break up. After the second test, the cloud top continued to grow. Satisfied with their effort, their planes returned to base. The scientists were eager to examine the storm the following day. However, when they flew to the predicted storm location, looking for the eye of the storm, it was gone. They found the hurricane center moved nearly 100 miles west of what these idiots expected it to do. And to their astonishment, the hurricane made a 135 degree left turn and was now moving due west. And on top of that, it was strengthening. By the afternoon of the 15th, Hurricane King struck Savannah, Georgia. One person died in the storm surge and the, there was $2 million, $2 million in damage was done to Georgia and South Carolina. You can see right here. See it? The public's early enthusiasm for weather modification slackened. So let me ask you guys this. Why is it that your grandparents and great-grandparents understood what weather modification is, but there are some of you who are going to come on here and tell me this is a conspiracy? I think Americans and, and the world in general are getting less and less educated every single generation. People no longer know how to research they are no longer able or even willing to push back against the narratives they are being fed through Project Mockingbird. Again, that's CIA, right? So basically, um, in an era when science fiction movies featured mad scientists threatening world destruction from their hubris, this event seemed to fit the trope. For many years after, no scientists dared mention weather modification and hurricane in the same sentence. In fact, they went completely the opposite. They scrubbed it from the history books, from the science books. In fact, they quit educating the next generation of Americans about what they could do so that when it happened, you would not be armed with the knowledge to fight against them. 11 years later, the National Hurricane Research Project carried out very modest seeding equipment test in hurricanes. Did you know about that? No, of course you didn't. But kept things on the down low. You guys, this is on a federal website. And they're telling you exactly what they did and they are doing. Until they were sure the storm wasn't going to pull a swerve on them. It wasn't until 1962 that the U.S. Weather Bureau Department of Defense reached a formal agreement to carry out Project Storm Fury and attempted to seed hurricanes again. One of my uh, representatives of my state put through legislation to stop this. 
and the people in the Louisiana legislative laughed at her. I'm going to bring her on my channel to talk about her legislation because when people in power don't even know true history or what their government is capable of, it's shameful. By the way, folks, YouTube does not pay me. They have it in five months. If you'd like to buy me a cup of coffee or my dog's a treat, please look in the top of comments. If you do, and you add your email address to whatever you send, I'll get you on the monthly newsletter and we can do Zoom links together. Folks, a friend of mine and I, the lady that writes the newsletter for my channel, we wrote a book together and we were recently published, took almost a year. It's called Growing Under a Poisoned Sky. This is the book. You can find it everywhere. You can find it on Amazon, on Kindle, Barnes & Noble, Walmart. It's worldwide. eBay, it's literally worldwide. Please purchase the book. It'll explain a lot to you. If you are anywhere near where Hurricane Aaron is coming, I'm not saying this is what your government did, but I'm saying this is what your government does. Over and over, almost science fiction, hurricane modification and project storm fury. The observation and understanding of hurricanes has always been a priority for the National Weather Service. Since its beginning, the study of tropical cyclones has been at the forefront of the agency's operations with new technologies offering information on hurricanes over decades of research. From 1962 until 1983, hurricane observation took enormous steps in a direction that sounds almost like science fiction. Human interference and hurricane modification, known as Project Storm Fury. The effort was undertaken by several government agencies, the Weather Bureau included. You wonder why our president is constantly trying to put an end to NOAA. People are like, oh, but we need weather, we need weather. They're killing us with their weather. Guys, come on. There's no global warming. However, there is human interference in the weather and there is reasons that it's becoming an issue. In fact, President Trump during his first term was telling people this nonsense was going on. Listen to this propaganda from ABC News. Later this morning, John, good morning. As, as Florence bears down, why is the president so fixated on the previous Hurricane Maria, which hit Puerto Rico last year? Well, it's a little bizarre, Dan, but the president has said publicly this was the great unsung success, uh, the federal response to, uh, to, to Puerto Rico and Hurricane Maria. Certainly it is not seen that way uh, by, by most people. And then he had this bizarre situation where he was taking issue with the official death count. This confounded even the president's own top allies. We've seen several of them, uh, ranging from Paul Ryan, the Speaker of the House, uh, to the governor of Florida, come forward and say no. They accept the death toll of nearly 3,000 uh, killed by Maria and the aftermath. And he was questioning the death toll. I bet he questioned the Maui death toll, too. I disagree with the president on this, but I've got to tell you, the president has not taken any questions on this uh, from the White House press. Uh, and since he started doing this, uh, the, the, uh, there's not been a press briefing at the White House. So the White House not eager to answer questions about this. Let me switch to another subject, uh, another sore subject for the White House. We got bombshell news on Friday. Paul Manafort, the former chairman of the Trump campaign for five months, he is now cooperating with the special counsel in the Russia probe. So what the Russia probe. are you hearing from your sources on this Sunday morning about how much concern there may or may not be in the West Wing? Funny, now we know who is actually behind that. The Clintons, the Obamas. Please, President Trump, arrest these people. 
And here, this is this is what's happening right now, a couple of hours ago. Here in the WREL Live Center, we are continuing to track Hurricane Aaron. I wanted to give you a live look at Turks and Caicos. Uh, this is a resort there on the beach. You can see the palm trees really blowing in the wind and uh, the rough surf there. Uh, but here locally, Hurricane Aaron is expected to stay offshore. You've heard Elizabeth say that all morning long. Uh, the storm is expected to bring some serious impacts to North Carolina's coast this week, though. The next round of mandatory evacuation get underway in just a couple of hours at 8 o'clock this morning. Visitors were asked to leave Hatteras and Ocracoke yesterday, and now permanent residents are being asked to leave today by 8 o'clock. Uh, WREL's Eric Miller was in Rodanthe yesterday. He spoke to a couple of people who say they're staying put. They're not going anywhere. You always have those people. Just in case you were unaware, there are, and I know this does sound crazy, I, please understand, I have a master's in education. I spent 10, 10 years in college. I was on the island of Maui five weeks post-fire when I was introduced to what the HARP, yes, HARP, H-A-A-R-P, what they can do. When I saw a hurricane barreling down on Maui and then all of these I call them like stun guns, like rays shoot out from the islands, hit the hurricane, and then redirect the hurricane away from the island. I cried. Like it was shocking to me that they have that kind of control. So, I mean, be thankful. Obviously, they don't want the hurricane to hit or they would let it. Because if you go and just Google HARP, and start watching some of um, these satellites go off. It's like, I don't even know the real word. Y'all drop it in comments, the word I'm looking for. You're going to notice that right after Aaron is done, people there will be people out there that monitor it. And they will show you how along the coast they turned all these frequencies on. And we all know everything is frequency based. And the hurricane just couldn't come on shore. Yes, they can do it. If you're arguing with me about that, you, you probably don't believe that they can see the hurricane either, right? You know what bothers me about these large platforms that call themselves conservatives when we all know they're neoconservatives is that these are the topics, they re these are real things that our government really has done and none of them ever talk about it. They talk about conspiracy that can't be proven that makes the rest of us look crazy. So that when someone like me, who is not only a published author, but has a master's degree in education, four certifications and a minor in science, sits here showing you with receipts the truth, you're programmed not to believe me. That is truly heartbreaking to me. And I pray for some of you, these are the answers you've been looking for. This is the moment the scales fall off your eyes. This is the moment that you realize that those things in Revelation, the book of Revelation, they don't seem so far-fetched now, do they? I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here with me. I pray more of you will get into the boat with us. My husband's got a couple of CAT scans coming up. And without him working, nope, we don't have any sick days left. You know, he's 46 with an aneurysm. Nope, disability doesn't work for us. Nope, we don't get food stamps and no YouTube doesn't pay us. So if all of you would jump in the boat, just send a dollar, it would be such a huge blessing. Love you guys so much. Talk to you later.